Welcome to Barters and Crafts. I'm Karen from West Virginia. And I'm Connie from Maryland. And today we're here unedited and we are going to watch Karen do a special project. Karen, what are you doing today? Today we're going to do a gnome. I did the pre-stuff because it's done with paper mache. So I took a sour cream container and balled up a piece of aluminum foil and then did paper mache uh, recipe that I'll have listed when we post this. Then I took the paper mache glue, wrapped it with newspaper and for the beard and the nose and the eyes and all I took a napkin and did that little creation so now what I'm going to do since it's nice and dry is I have stuffing yarn and the yarn is this one is about eight inches or no, I'm sorry, five inches. And then I have some that are two inches. What are, the two, for, what are the two is, inches for? The two inches are for the mustache. And then the five inches are for the hair and the beard. And then I have gray yarn, which is about eight inches. And that's going to go with... The hat, which is maybe, I haven't decided yet. So this is one option of a hat, which is a baby mitten. Well, that's a cool idea. I never even thought about using that with a uh, for a gnome hat. Yeah. And then I was going to take the yarn and go around it for the hat base. And uh, sew that on. And then I have an old fuzzy sock, which I've already cut one apart. So we're gonna cut the end of the sock, which is this part. And then this part of the sock, which would also make a hat. So there will be sewing involved. Uh-oh. Yeah. Dark needles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be fun. And then I found this, which I thought if I do this type of hat, I wouldn't have to sew. I can just hot glue it on. And then that'll fit on his head. Well, that seems easy to do. Mm-hmm. So that's one option. And then a little fuzzy ball to go on the end of the hat. And this one has like little sparkles on it. And then I have a photo button. I have, which is an option. And this is also an option. I did a flower bouquet and they're buttons, little flower buttons. And then this is a piece of pipe cleaner and you take the button and you put it on the pipe cleaner. Let's see if I can do it again. On the pipe cleaner. And then you just fold this piece over. And you have your flower. Well, that's easy enough. Mm -hmm. And then the leaves. I took another piece of pipe cleaner. You need scissors. And I cut, let's see, about two and a half inches of a pipe cleaner. And I took, which you could probably take a pin and curl it over. 
and then I twist the end like that. And I only did one leaf, but you can you can make it longer, cut one that's longer, and do two leaves. That's so cool. I like that, Karen. Thank you. It's an idea I came up with today. <laughs> that's a pretty good idea. Actually, this could be used for a lot of different things. Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, and I have paint brushes, and I have paints, and I was telling Connie earlier, I have so many of those, like, jello shooter cups, and of course, I don't have any in reach, but I have the little jello shooter cups that I use for mixing epoxy color and other wonderful things, but I have the lids, and I have a ton of lids, so I decided that... I was going to use those as paint palettes. So we'll be putting paint on those when I go to paint our little gnome. And as a crafter always does, we use our resources wisely. Yes. We do not throw, we do not throw anything away. So repurpose. That's right. <laughs> repurpose, repurpose, repurpose. Even if we can then wash that lid out, we can you still use it again. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Until it falls apart. <laughs> And then this is a phone holder that I made out of epoxy that I'll be using when I go to do the beard and mustache because the glue will just peel off of here. Oh, again, another another thing they could use instead would be an, uh, silicone mat. Yes. Anything silicone? Silicone mat mode? would be good. Okay. I haven't cleaned my silicone mats up with the epoxy, so I don't have one that's and ready use but that's okay again what crafters do they use different things that they can repurpose <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the colors that i have for him are i can't wait to see this come on <laughs> i have a peach color and these are magic fly acrylic paints is what i use so I have a cream color for his skin tone. And then I have green for his eyes. I have black for his eyes. And then I have white because the Mosh Posh, if you can tell, kind of turned it brown when it dried. So we're going to brighten him up a little bit for his to go underneath of his beard and do you think that was because of the paper because i've never seen mod posh turn something brown like brown that. i think it was because it, it's the reaction to the um napkin because it didn't turn the newspaper brown it just where the napkin was hmm. scientific experiments yeah <laughs> that's okay there's always something to cover it up which is perfect. Yeah. And I tell you what, I did a scientific experiment today. What did but you it's think? not it's not ready. I might be able to show it um, when we record your project. Okay. But uh, it's a paper mache and then I sealed it and I'm testing it out to see if I can use it as a planter. As a what a planter? A planter. Oh, okay. Well, maybe uh, when we do my recording, then you can see if it's ready by then. Ready. Yeah, I'm hoping it is, but we'll see. So I'm just dabbing a little paint onto this. These paints, I like these paints because they have corks. Oh. So they're really nice to use because... You can cork them up and not have to worry about them drying out. And that's the lid? They don't come out? Yeah, the, uh, there's a oh, lid. The lid. Oh, there's a lid on top of it. Okay, I didn't see you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a lid that goes on top. But I always keep the corks on them so they don't dry out. Oh. Where'd you get those paints from? 
These I got from Amazon, and it was a set of 14. I don't remember how much I paid for them. I know they weren't that much. <clears throat> but I figured with, because mom does a lot of painting. So I figured with her painting and me painting, and then when the grandkids come to visit, we get arts and crafts out, and they paint. And it's just an acrylic paint? It's just an acrylic paint. Thank God, because I've dropped things on the floor. and <laughs> I'm like, it's all right. I got it. <laughs> but today I did a boxy, and it went on the outside table. Uh -oh. And she was out on the porch at the time. I quickly grabbed the mineral spirits and a paper towel and another set of gloves and had that cleaned up in a jiffy. <laughs> Rut row. <laughs> yeah, it took it right up. It was really, really nice because it was at the, at the tacky stage anyway. I guess that's something that you definitely don't want to do on the inside of the house, epoxy. No, not in, no. I'm not allowed to do it inside. <laughs> so I always have to wait for nice weather in order to do it. Yeah, I don't think that's why I said I've always said with um, epoxy, it's nice. It's beautiful stuff to look at, but it just seems a little too messy for me. <laughs> it is a little sticky. Especially when it gets, because you, you have a time limit with epoxy. And depending on your project, depends on, you know, how you want the consistency of the epoxy. Because there's some things that I'll wait to work on until the epoxy does get to that sticky. So it, all, so it all depends on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, with me, it does. Because, um, like I said, it all depends on your project. Because there's a few projects that I have that I like it when it's at that consistency. Because even though it's a little more difficult to spread, it doesn't run. Gotcha. Okay, so I have all my paints. I poured a little too much green, I think. So I can't tell you the number of the brushes because I really don't know. But we're going to start with, if I can get a hold of them, this little brush to do around this base area and do his nose. I try not to get too much of his eyes. Depends on, you know, how neat of a painter you are, or how messy of a painter you are. Your brush holds the paint, whereas this one doesn't because it's a little stiff because I use it for a little bit of everything. I don't have separate brushes for this and that. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same way. Whatever brush I use, I use. <laughs> yeah, and I use it with the um, with the scientific experiment that we did on our live with the uh, Mod Podge. So I use it with Mod Podge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they all clean. Robota. They all clean out. You can reuse them. <laughs> This is a little too peachy, so I'm adding a little bit of white. Kind of mellow the color out a little bit. So with this, when I'm when 
you know, when you paint, you kind of go into like a daze or, you know, like a meditation state. Sometimes they, a lot of people find painting very relaxing. Some people find it is. crafts relaxing. So, I mean, yeah, it's like I'm sitting here. Actually, I'm sitting here mesmerized just watching you, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I get amazed on how things actually turn out when I do them. It's like a, a surprise. Like, you know, it's it could you could think that it's going to turn out like crap, but it surprises to me. It's surprising when it turns out really, really good. Well, I don't know why that would surprise you. It's just... Oh, it, it does, because I have... I don't... It's best not to have expectations. But, but you know, again, I guess the easiest way to say it is if you have in your mind it's supposed to turn out like this, and it doesn't, then you have... Um, I don't know what the word is I want to think of. Uh, you disappoint yourself. But as a crafter... But crafters don't think like that. Crafters think like, oh, well, I have a, I have in my mind what I want it to look like, but we'll see how it goes as I'm doing it. Is that, is that Well, yes, but that's with a, a few of my things. I mean, not a lot of them, but a few of them. I've actually surprised myself because it's turned out better than I expected. Mm -hmm. But I try not to have expectations because expectations can lead to disappointment, which leads to um, depression. Mm, that's true. So mm -hmm. I try not to have expectations because they never turn out anyway. Either they turn out better or they turn out worse. So it's always best to be surprised rather than deal with expectations. And with other people, they never live up to your expectations because they don't even know what they are. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. <laughs> what do you think? There you go. That looks good. Now we're going to do, I was going to do the eyes with this brush, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do a little tippy brush when it goes into a point. And then we're going to do around the eyes. I love your terminology. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't know the names. <laughs> the little tippy brush. <laughs> I tell you, and it's funny because you do this for years and and I just never really learned the correct names, or I forget. I would know, but hand me the whatchamacallit. <laughs> mm -hmm, right. I mean, I know the specifics, like the glue gun and the scissors. <laughs> you know, I don't sit there and go, hand me those cutty things, or, or the, you know, the stick that spews hot glue. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't even, I honestly don't even know if paintbrushes have a specific name. I mean, uh, they, maybe they do. I don't know. Well, I know they have numbers. Some of them, like when you get into the, uh, I'd like to say like art school. Like the professional artists and painters. Yes. Yeah. Artisans. They have. And I'm, these eyes are like so messed up but i think this is what makes it a little funny <laughs> <laughs> so i'm taking the same brush and i'm dipping it in the black do i rinse it first no i do have some water here to rinse it but black you know for the pupils and all, if it goes outside into the green, I got green on my brush anyway. Like that made any sense? <laughs> no, it made sense. But black covers up everything. Yeah. Now you definitely don't want to take black and then put white on it and try to use that. No, because then you have a gray mess usually. Right. <laughs> I 
There you go. See, now that looks better that you put the pupils in it. All right. All right, so now I'm going to put that in the water. And now we're going to go with white for the beard to cover that up and do his eyebrows. So I'm going to the next brush that I showed you earlier. And we're going to do the eyebrows. And I'm not, I'm just dabbing it on because I did make them somewhat of a three dimension. And the way that I did, well, I thought about this. I did this, you know, just with my hands, with <clears throat> forming everything when it was still wet. But I also thought later that I could have just used my clay tools and probably formed it a little nicer, a little smoother. That's a good idea. Never think, see, again, you, you use things that, you come up with ideas as you're, as you're going along. You could have done next time you will do, you know what I mean? You could try it that way next time. Right. And that's what I was, having a conversation the other day and I said with the uh, tool thing that I have that I made it's actually a makeup thing that you know you can make with epoxy but I have like all my tools in it and I have to make more because I've been using a lot more different types of tools not just clay not just for jewelry you know just some other little odds and ends so I was saying that I needed to make more because I'd like to have one set with just all the jewelry tools and one set with just <clears throat> excuse me with just uh, the clay tools and then one set with like the paint brushes and one set with you know, wood burning tools and then have one set that's just miscellaneous, just tools that you would use for all of your projects within all of your projects to where when you're doing a project that you need tools from something else, you just grab the miscellaneous tools. And then when you go to do that specific craft, then all your tools are still together. But the only problem is you find that you use a lot of different tools for different, like say your um, clay tool, you can use for that. So, you know, you still have to have them all in reach. <laughs> right, well, that's what I'm saying. The miscellaneous tools would have, it would be a bigger thing that has pretty much all of them together. Gotcha. But when you're but when you're just doing one specific craft, you have something with just those tools, so they're not messed up because you used them with something else or for another craft. The mi mi if I can talk, the miscellaneous <laughs> tools would have you know, it's like buying double for everything, which is you know something that I've always done. Most people only buy one thing that they need. I buy double of what I need. Girl, I'm about double or triple. <laughs> I bake cakes too. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, Ross always sits there and complains that the drawer with the spatulas, the rubber spatulas, there's, why do you need all these? Why do you need all these little, uh, why do you need all these? Uh, you know, why can't you just use one? Well, because one, then that one's dirty and I have to either wash it or I don't have time to stop and wash things. You know what I mean? You just pick another one up and go. Right. Yeah, you're on a time crunch. Right. All right, so now we're going to do the yarn. And the one thing that I do like about this acrylic paint is it dries pretty quick, too. If not, hit it with a heat gun and it's dry in a second. Right. <laughs> I have a habit of holding the heat gun a little too close and burning okay. things. Maybe you're better off with a hairdryer then. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have one of those too. And with the hairdryer, see, I, 
I have trouble anyway. But with the hair dryer, when I used it the one time, things just went flying across the table. <laughs> <laughs> they need like a, I know they have high and low, but they need like the, the number thing <laughs> on exactly how low you need to go so <laughs> things don't go flying. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a line of glue. And then I'm going to lay the yarn down in it. And a normal person would have like a wood popsicle <laughs> stick. <laughs> but no, I use my fingers. And then you get the... You roll your fingers and get the glue off. And then I'll put another line on, make it just a touch longer. Normally you would have them already separated. You need those little tips that go on your fingers. You know what I'm talking about? I wouldn't be a, I still wouldn't be able to, to move my fingers around. I don't know. I I have trouble wearing gloves. I you just... know, honestly, I have those tippy things for your fingers, and I feel that your finger is now ten times the size as it should be. <laughs> uh -huh. So the glue's still a little sticky, so I'm going to put that on the back of his head and then add more to the other side. Can you see me okay? And I'm just going to do the crown. I was going to do the cup or the, do the, the hat and then just glue like the hair inside of the hat. But I forgot until just now. <laughs> <laughs> Why, this works just the same. Yeah. And don't mind the big your pieces. I've been trying to find some headphones of some sort because my earbuds pop out of my ears and the and I've done the the Bluetooth ones and they I lose those too. So I thought I would try these and see how they do. And are you liking them? I do, but they're a little tight around here that after a while, it just makes my, it feels heavy <laughs> on my neck. So, I'm kind of burning my fingers, but I glued them on. I don't know if you can see me. We can see you. I can see. So. And then I got tired of using that, so I decided just to put it on his head. And I don't think I cut enough. I'm going to burn my fingers. No finger burning allowed. I know. I'm glad that it's not like scalding hot glue because I'd be in trouble. <laughs> you would not craft her until you burned your fingers a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I want to add yarn for his beard because that kind of turned out pretty good. Yeah, that looks good because it's got the texture for the beard already. Mm -hmm. I might do a little bit of uh, something for his lips. Let's see if I can do something in here. Let's see if I don't mess this up. 
should do a little bit of pink. little tree <laughs> I miss him I miss miss Bob he's so relaxing to watch so I said watching I'm just sitting here watching you paint and I'm going you know you're doing the simplest little thing but it's so mesmerizing to watch someone you know, create with yeah. the paint yeah bringing bring we bring good things to life that's right <laughs> Oh, GE commercial, bringing good things to life. All right, I put my red away. I don't have red. So it's just going to go like this because I don't have red. But that's not too bad. No, yeah, that looks good. All right, so our next step, and I do have stuffing because of the hat. If I wasn't going to use, because I may still use the cup. I like the cup. I think the cup fits perfect on him. Look at that. That's perfect. Yeah. So I think we're going to go with the cup. It's always good to have options because ideas are great. Now, where did you Spring. get that cup from? <laughs> okay. This, this cup, a place that I used to work, they had a, a water cooler, you know, like the... Uh Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took some because I always have ideas. So yes, I did. I did take merchandise from where I worked once, but it was a cup. It, it was still, you know, something though. <laughs> so if they ever said, you know, did you ever steal from your job? I'd have to say yes because I took a cup. <clears throat> All right, so because this needs a front and a back, I'm going to use the other sock. Though I really don't think I need to cut two of these. <clears throat> so you'll have something for later if you don't use it. But I'm also thinking, because this is how I measured after I cut it. I cut it this much of it off. And then I took it around. Actually, I put it over his head. And then brought it around. To where you could only see part of his beard. I don't really measure too much when I do crafts. I just, I don't know, just something. I don't think any of us do. Yeah, I, well, some people do. My great grandmother did there for a while, and then she could just eye something, and that was it. But I'm taking it to the one side of his beard, to the other side of his beard, and then I'm going to be cutting this part off for the arms. So depending on how big of a base you use, like I said, this was a sour cream, a small sour cream container, but you could use anything to make one of these. You know, you could use a pudding container or that's what I used with the uh, shenanigans, the thing that held the coins, that was a pudding container. And I just cut the edges and made them more round. So if you wanted to make them bigger, you can like use a, I'm trying to think. Of oh, something. you could use like a cottage cheese container, <clears throat> you know, like that size or a bigger size of the sour cream, like the next step up. Or, or like the huge, I use the um, large yogurt containers. I mean, the large ones. When I make, Yeah, that would work too. When I make Dudley his ice creams. <laughs> <laughs> He gets he he gets his ice creams. We make yogurt and. Um, You're gonna have to give me that recipe now that there's a puppy that's right. in the house. That's right. You are actually that's something you should make your puppy because, it, it's a frozen tree and it really keeps them occupied for a little while. Well, I tell you, you know what I've been giving her, ice cubes. And and that's the same concept basically, except for this has a better taste to it. Right. But I did ice cubes. The first time I did ice cubes, I threw one in her water bowl and then I gave her the other one. 
<laughs> By the time she got the second one, it was like bobbing for apples. <laughs> the, her whole face was soaking wet from her trying to get it out. It was so hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. That's cute, though. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to glue this on. And I may still use these these gray pieces around it because that'll cover up your cut edges and the edge of the cup. Well, can't so. you, instead, you said you were going to sew them on. Can't you just glue them on? Well, that's what I'm going to do. It's what I'm saying, you know, to cover the parts up that you don't get. Oh, and, and by the way, too, with the glue gun, I have three extra sticks sitting here because the worst is being in the middle of a project and running out of glue. <laughs> yeah, I have the bigger glue gun with the glue sticks. Oh, let me just tell you, and I'm not sure, and maybe find, somebody would find this uh, interesting to know, too. I went and bought a um, cordless no, I'm not going to say the name brand. Cordless glue gun from Home Depot. Oh, your super duper glue gun. Yeah, my super. And do you know I returned them both because they don't hold a charge. Oh, really? I'm very upset. I was very heartbroken. It's a good concept, though. Yes, it is. And I know a lot of people use them. I'm not sure why it says on the packaging 3.5 hours and it lasted 15 minutes. So. Well, I think they need to... Uh redo that glue gun i mean it's a great concept but it needs like um an automated system where you can drop the glue sticks in and just it keeps on going <laughs> there you go i think that would be wonderful if they could do something like that all right so i have one piece on I don't have it completely on, but I did it around the edges. So now I'm going to glue the other piece on, and then we'll see what that looks like and go from there, because this is not really thought out. I've never done this before, so. What could go wrong? <laughs> right. <laughs> Pinterest gone wrong. Stay tuned. 911 call at 11. That's what I think is fun. When I get that glass cutter out, that's going to be fun. <laughs> yes, we all need to know. If, if anybody knows Karen, she's had a glass cutter now for, oh, what's six, it been? Six years, I think. <laughs> and has not used it yet. <laughs> <laughs> But I have, I have bottles for when I do. It might be one of the summer projects that I do. <clears throat> because I'd rather it break outside than inside. So we'll see. But the way, but the way um, Pinterest made it seem, was it Pinterest or YouTube? Nothing could go wrong. Right, the way that the, mm -hmm. I know exactly what you mean. All right, so I took the glue where it seamed up through here and just took it straight down to the point. Like I said, we'll see how it turns out. Cause see, like now this one has like this. I don't know. We'll see. Just close it up so it makes a. Point. I am. I am. So I did the same thing over top of that one. And with this, I mean, if you want to trim it up, make it a little neater. You can. Let's try this one. Mm -hmm. 
It's burning my fingers. <laughs> Don't try this at home unless you have supervision. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you would think that the material of socks would um, hold the heat away from your fingers, but it really doesn't. It goes through mm -mm. it very easily. Right, and with it being uh, um, paper. See, this is what I was afraid of. I was afraid it was going to look like... I'm going to have to take this off a little bit. I don't like how close it is on that side. So don't glue it all the way up to the point. Yeah. There that you go. Looks, looks a little better. All right. So you learn by mistakes. So don't take it up to the point because that looks a little better like that. See where it's not on the inside. So it's only half not even yeah half from there to there with the glue on the cup if you can find these cups these cups are hard to find i was very when i came across these the other day and with my stuff i was like oh yes <laughs> i never you know, use those you know what people can use instead if they can't find cups like that now it's a little more expensive which those cups would probably be um less expensive the uh, styrofoam cones. Oh, yes. I did have one sitting here to show, and I don't see it now. I'm very prepared. <laughs> you know, you have what you have in your hands prepared. <laughs> and this would have probably been better kind of tucked in instead of just like seamed, which is what I'm doing. I'm just taking it along the edge. And then pushing the two pieces of material together. And it dawned on me now that I should have stuffed it. That would have probably been better. Yeah, it's not all the way together yet. So I'm going to take some of the glue off here so it doesn't get stuck to the stuffing and I think I'm going to take a little bit of stuffing and put it in around the top and see how that looks it stands up a little bit more So this side came apart, so we're going to try it, try folding it in a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. Don't know if it'll work with me. I'll have 911 on call for your birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's got a third degree. Ow, ow. That, that, was, <laughs> that was directly on my finger. Hmm. And this, folks, are, is why we are unedited, because you would have missed all that. <laughs> Ooh, I did blister that one. Oh, are you all right? Yeah. I'm laughing at you, but seriously, are you all right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't expect anything less, because I'd be laughing, too. <laughs> it's nothing trust, some, trust some antibiotic cream won't, won't heal. I burnt my finger so bad one time that... It was actually all four because I was trying to pull the hot glue off of the one finger and got the other two fingers too. <laughs> oh. Because And then you, then you can't use them for a day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like a day out of commission. I put a lot of glue on that, so I'm not touching it. <laughs> Ross and I actually went to the movies and I was like, oh, I can't go, I can't go. He's like, you're fine. I took a bag of ice with me and was just holding on to the bag of ice. Yeah. Oh, was, my. It was bad. <laughs> so I said, you're not a crafter until you uh, 
burn yourself. Right. Just like a cook isn't a cook until they burn themselves too. It happens. Yes, or cuts themselves. That's right. Or cuts themselves with a knife or <laughs> I've done that with the ecto knife. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Now, yep, the, the only kind of knife that really, really scares me, and I use them, is the rotary knife. Mm. Or the, the, the rotary rotary. cutter. Click, they don't call it a knife. It's a cutter, you know, for, like, a, uh, quilting. and. Oh, yeah, I like those. I do, too, but they're very, I mean, you can't slip with that. That's It's like a pizza cutter, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But they're very, very sharp, so, <laughs> you know, you slip off of that. I'm very careful with those. <laughs> As you can see, I'm kind of forming because it's like, I don't know, it went out. It kind of looked like a figure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because the stuffing is, you got to form the stuffing. That looks like a gnome hat, right? Yeah, it looks good. All right, so I have my little fuzzball. I'm going to put him on the top. I like that I don't have to sew. This is really cool. And I wanted to see you sew. I know. Well, you might have to with the hand, with the arms, if I do arms. <laughs> and then I have some stars, because I thought he could be a wizard. A knight. A wizard? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking more like a night gnome, like a bedtime gnome. <laughs> I like wizard, wizardy star. Yeah. That'll work, too. So I have some of these. These um, go to scrapbooking. Mm. And they have the uh, their stickers. Self adhesive. So, yeah, they have the adhesive, which I'm not going to use the glue gun. I'm just going to put them on here for right now. But I thought this is a, a nice little fun craft that you could do with kids. I, the adult should do the glue gun, <laughs> but of course a child could probably do it a lot better than me. So. And then I'll put the, uh, I'm going to put some gray yarn around this part of it. But I've that, lost the longer ones. Oh, here they are. That'll give it a nice trim to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I braided it. This one. The, so that way you wouldn't have to now with gluing with sewing I was just gonna like pack it but since I'm using the glue gun I think I'm going to uh, I, really, I really like the stars on it you need some more stars definitely finish Any more it. stars yeah at least one at least a couple more How's that? Perfect. <laughs> okay. So now we are going to do the trim here. I'm doing three dots. And then I'm going to take the end and put it here by the seam. And then the other one will go to the other seam. Burnt my fingers again, and then you have one in the middle. Karen, you really need those little tippy things. <laughs> I know. Little, I need like little fingertips that just the glue won't stick to. 
<laughs> I don't feel like real fingertips on my fingers. All right, so I have the strings are still kind of hanging here. So I'm going to do that to the seam. I'm going to take the tip of my glue gun and push them down, which will help me not burn my fingers. And then I'll cut the excess string. So these socks kind of get fuzzy, but there's the hat. Cute. It's not the best work, but like I said, I've never done one before. So this is kind of like trial, trial and error. My next one will probably look a little more decent. I think that looks good. So with the yarn, well, we're not, not going to do this yet. We're just going to put his hair up in his hat for right now. Because now we're going to work on his... He, he needs a little ponytail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now I'm going to wrap this back around him. His hat won't stay on now because his hair's up. I'm going to wrap this around him and start where the one side of his beard is. And go to the other and then and if you cut off too much then you know the strap this the sock will always stretch right so we'll glue this one the one nice thing about these is that the inside of them had lines so it was easier to measure when it came to the end of the beard. I knew the line to cut. So it's kind of like pre-marked. All right. As he pulls over. So I'm going to do them this way where the straight line is on the bottom. up to about his mouth. Tap that on. <clears throat> and then bring it around. And do the same thing on this side. Pull it kind of tight. Voila. That's cute so far. Keep going. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to check that out there. I'm thinking about an arm. I think that might be good. That's about the size. That's a, that looks good. And I have an idea. All right, so with the arm, we're going to stuff it a little bit, so we're going to take some more of our stuffing. And we're going to roll it 
And why don't so you it's a certain consistency. No, what? I was going to say, why don't you glue it in half first and then uh, stuff it in the And stuff it? Yeah. Well, that, that might I work. Could. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just looking out for your fingers. <laughs> right? And it's a great idea. <laughs> It might be better on your fingers. I don't know. I just I'm just looking at it, thinking maybe that might work. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I was just thinking about the squishing. Oh, that works perfect. Now it might be harder to stuff a little bit because you got a small hole, but <laughs> but if you have oh, and I have one too. This isn't, well, paintbrush. We know you have plenty of those. Right? <laughs> yeah, anything. I also can. use a, um, a skewer stick. I've yeah. used that, that before. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking, but I wasn't sure if anybody have, if you would have them on hand. Yeah, but I figure if anybody's got a paintbrush this way. Just hold it, just shove it down in there. So I said it seems a little, it might be a little more difficult and time consuming this way, but I think it'll save your fingers. Right. Look, it's like a magic trick. <laughs> Abracadabra. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> well, that wasn't too, too bad. Mm -mm, but it's just working it through now. Get it to the other side. Go to the other side. <laughs> Which is really all I need is like the elbow part. Maybe a little bit on this end. Just find your, you know, how thick you want it. I mean, a lot of crafts is... I know some people aren't really into crafts and, and like the step-by-step, -step, but it's there very difficult for me to do a step-by-step -step unless you're watching me because it's the only, it, it changes so often. The only time I can say, well, let's look at that first. Anytime I can say, unless you buy a kit that comes with every single thing you possibly can eat and you're just duplicating it, I mean, a lot of things are just the whim of the kind, you know, here it is. Let's go. All right. What, what can you come up with? Right. <laughs> okay, that didn't work. Let's, let's see the easiest way. Right. All right, so what I did was I formed an arm. I have the seam on the inside. So when you glue it, see, I got to sneeze. Well, bless um, you. Excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. So, you want to find like where his ear would be? I didn't do ears, but where his ear would be is where you would glue the arm, and that way it comes to at least the middle, and you can judge that by his nose, at least the middle. And that makes it look a little more realistic of an arm. It's not too long, not too short. So now we're going to do the glue gun again. And I got to add. Now I had three extra glue sticks with me. And this is my second one. So we're going to put it right about there. And I got it on the end, so I'm probably going to have some spider webs or glue webs. And I kind of folded it in when I stuck it on there to get the back part of it. So, and then I'll come in on this side and get the underneath. A little dab will do ya. A little dab will do you. 
I would say dollop a daisy, but that's, you know, that's the sour cream. <laughs> it is the sour cream container. I was going to say, and you use the sour cream container, so you know what? <laughs> yeah, I can say dollop a daisy. <laughs> oh, I see, that turned out pretty good. Okay. Hey. can't really see the glue. It looks like you sewed it on. Mm-hmm. All right, so I think we might give him flowers in this hand. Let's see. Yeah, I think we will. And then I have something else. I think get my clue. So why are. can't so why can't he hold the flowers in one hand and the book under his his other arm? Right. Well, that's what I, that was my whole deal. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And his arm didn't stay glued. It's too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Is it too soon, Karen? Yeah, way too soon. <laughs> yeah, sometimes hot glue on depending on what uh, material you're using. Sometimes it sticks automatically and then other times you have to hold it for an hour. Not really, but I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> All right. So I am trying to figure out how, because I know these are going to fall off if I glue them on and then do it. I'm trying to figure out how I want them arranged. All right. And then before, once you find out how you have them arranged, if you do the flowers, this is what we're going to do to kind of keep them together is we're going to take one because I already had those two twisted together. So now we're going to twist the third one in with them. And then that way, all you got to do is glue one spot and you don't have to worry about them falling apart. I really think those flowers are really unique. I like them. Thank you never have thought of doing something like that so something so simple that makes a little bouquet yeah it's i haven't found these were oh my gosh this is these buttons are from when my kids were little so i don't even know if you can find flowers like that now i don't know if it's necessarily like that but i'm sure you could probably find some kind of flower button do you know what i mean uh -huh. these are pretty flowers though i mean i like those buttons What do you think? Like that? Or do you think they should be more in the center? More like, I think over there more. Right like that. In front of his face? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Okay. They looked like he was too tucked under his arm before. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he's on a mission. <laughs> like, I'm going to get these flowers. You're right. I got in trouble. I got to go say I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So I glued the one end, but where it's opened right there, I'm going to glue this end shut. I don't have experience on doing hands, so I haven't worked on those yet. Yeah, he doesn't need hands. So I'm thinking a small piece, which I can use. This is, I hate using the walk on, because like I said, these are old socks, so they've been walked on and worn out. They never could stay up around the ankle, which is why they've become a craft project. And again, another reason you never throw anything away. <laughs> right. Sometimes you. So can throw I'm doing the fold. That's where I'm cutting. What were you saying? I said sometimes you can say crafters can be hoarders, but in a good way. You know what I mean? Right. But a lot of people don't see it in a good way. Right. Which I don't understand why they don't see it in a good way because. We have intentions for everything, but sometimes we have to think we have to let that go too if we haven't used it in forever. You know what I mean? But then again, we're gonna we might find something for it. 
Well, the funny thing is, is you don't really have any use for it until after you throw it out. Exactly. And then you're looking for it. And then you're like, oh, man, I threw that out. And then you have to go buy something brand new. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So I'm doing the arm the same way with you know, sewing, huh? with gluing the, the seam. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had any luck with uh, fabric glue? Yes. Really? I tried to use it one time, and I don't know if it was what I was using it with, but it just didn't work, and I gave up on it. Yes, I did a um, drama club, and I I did the, the scenes, you know, the backdrops and everything. Mm -hmm. I did those, and I used fabric glue with some of the sets on that. It does take a little while for it to dry. So like if you want, instead of using hot glue, if you had someone that didn't want to have use hot glue or it doesn't have a hot glue gun, you know, could you use I like I like that tape too for um seam not seams. Is it seams? When like, you do the like the hemming. Bind, like the binders tape? Yeah, it's mean? just a roll of tape, and then you just iron it to hem things to use it to hem. Oh, well, I need to look into that. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I made curtains one time. So instead of... Yeah. Look, I'm getting a lesson, you all, okay? <laughs> so instead of sewing, you just put this this strip of thing down you, and make a hem? You put the strip down in between the two pieces of fabric. And then you just iron them together. Huh. Yeah, it was, it was, it's a fantastic invention. Because it helped me do, do curtains have, really, really quick. Do you have the exact like, name of this stuff or do you not know? Or can I don't remember because we're talking t almost 20 years ago. Oh, so do they still have this stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they still have it. I have to, I'll look it up. I have to look at the package to tell you what it is. Huh. Alright, so I did this arm the same way. I stuffed it with the paintbrush handle. And the best thing with this is the way that you cut it. There's a, you know, the jaggy end, and then there's the straight end from where it was the straight piece and that's the part that I'm using for the hand is the straight piece and I'm putting the odd cut one as the shoulder and then again we're going to put the seam on the inside now see I got to figure this out I might have to take some stuffing out for his arm to lay the right way This is another good thing about not having to sew because <laughs> you don't have to rip stitches out in order to uh, get it to stay. Yeah, this one, he's got a muscle. <clears throat> All right. Now he's got a muscle. Is that what you I said? I said this one, he's got, he has a little bit of a muscle. There's like a little bit of a ball of the stuffing there. That book's heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to sew his arm on first, and then I'm going to position on where it's going to go. And by, exactly. so, and by so she meant glue. Oh, did I say so again? <laughs> I meant glue. Mm -hmm. And the other thing with, like, the paper mache is if you don't have, like, a hard base, it's going to get squishy and break when you press on it, trying to do some of the stuff, because I'm, I don't really pay attention about my strength. You never know how strong you are <laughs> until you break something. So with, right, a hard I, base, so with a hard base, you don't have to be so fragile with it, is what you're saying, huh? Yes. Gotcha. Yes. All 
right, now to figure out if I want to do it like this. That's upside down. Or just leave his arm. I can glue the elbow and then just put that there. What do you think? That's perfect. I think that's perfect. All right, guys, we're almost finished with this project. And I'll put it right there where his hand goes. Now I'm going to do his hair, and to do his hair, oh, there's some piece of his hair falling out. <laughs> kind of unravel it a little bit. This takes some time. You could probably unravel it a little bit before you, before you glue it. Yeah, but then it, it might be harder to just, well, maybe not. Yeah, well, what I mean was, you know, you glue the strips, which was my full intention, but I didn't want to be too time consuming. But you glue the strips, like I said, on that. I lost that too. On this. <clears throat> and then once they're glued down, then undo them because they're laying down and it's a little easier or you can even brush them out and then um, then just glue the strips on but I'm just trying to get a couple strands so did you have nice weather up there today or down there over there oh, oh. down yeah nice. yeah it was really nice I was able to do an epoxy pour today I had a couple orders that I had to <sighs> Do, so that worked out pretty good since I can't do the epoxy on the inside. Yeah, I don't think you should anyway. I don't think anybody should. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, even like in a basement or something, you'd have to have something laid down because there are times that it runs. I would like to be in a, you know, eventually have my own workspace to where if something does get a little messy, um, it's yeah, I mean, okay. yeah, like the drop. I mean, putting a drop cloth down, whatever to protect it. I still couldn't see putting a drop cloth down if like you have a carpeted floor, or. Oh know. my gosh, I couldn't imagine if if right. we had carpeting. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. It's like that's what I said. When I have carpeting in my house. I just couldn't imagine. Not that I would do. Like I said, epoxy just seems a little too. Um, too much for Messy. me. Yeah, too, too. Let's just put it that way. I'm too lazy for that. That take looks like a lot of too much work. Um, <laughs> I the first the first couple times. Oh my gosh, the first couple times I worked with epoxy. Oh, uh, it it would have been discouraging if I didn't have so many ideas for it with the mess that it made. If anybody's. And if anybody's watching this and you want to see some of the things that she's created, you can go over to our Facebook page at Barters and Crafts. Barter, no, Barters, Barter Crafts, right? Am I saying it right? Yes, for the Facebook page, it's Barter Crafts. Barter Crafts, right. And we have we have uh, different things that we've done posted, so um, I know everybody's watching this. As a, this, is, this isn't live. This is a recorded video, so but oh, yes. unedited. So I know nobody's watching live, obviously. <laughs> and if you are, stop looking. <laughs> how did you get this number? Yeah, how did you get this stop. number? <laughs> but yeah, just check us out over there. So the, Karen has a lot of her epoxy things, and we we are going to be posting a lot of our different crafts. And I'm just talking while she's doing her uh, pulling her hair out. I mean, pulling his <laughs> hair out. <laughs> So, we also have a YouTube channel. Um, you can catch us over there. We will put the links to everything in all of our videos and um, 
um, you know, we do a live. We have a live coming up on March 19th for our Craft Night Live, which on the, that one, we actually uh, have a theme and we kind of, neither one of us know what's going on. We pick a theme and this theme that we have now is called Spring. So Karen will do her interpretation or her craft or how she wants, whatever, whatever project she wants to do for spring. And I have my own thing and neither... Neither Karen and I have discussed what we're doing, so she has no clue what I'm doing. I have no clue what she's doing, and that's what we do once a month. We do our craft night live, so if you want to join us there, we go live on our barter craft page. It's like a a challenge, like a craft challenge between Connie and I on what we can (laughs) what we can create with just one i one word. What ideas we can get out of one word. Something fun and different, you know, not just showing you a craft or whatever. It's kind of showing you our talent to see how two different how two different people can take the same subject and just run, diff- hopefully, different angles with it. Because, you know, hey, we might come up with the same project one of these days. Let's yeah. hot butt. <laughs> you never know. That's right. You never but, know. But the other thing, too, is that we, we love to give stuff away, too. We like doing that kind of stuff too. So, I mean, and we try to do it with people that participate with our craft night live. That's usually where the giveaways are. So I have an idea for the spring giveaway. I just haven't gotten it down pat yet. Yeah. I mean, we are still new to this. We are still, I mean, we're not new to crafting. Um, we are new to virtual, right? <laughs> virtual showing you, showing you guys how we actually do these things. So we are still new to this. Um, so we are still getting our name out there. So I mean, if you're watching this and you want to share it, please do. We'd really right. appreciate it. And, and if you have any suggestions that you would like to see for our craft night live throw them in the comments or even suggest that you, you want to see you know um or even if you have an idea right like if you want to see if us make or you know some, you want to know how to make something or um tips and tricks on how to do something easier like you've tried to do an epoxy pour and it didn't work you know if you need help with anything you know we're here for you and we can help you out with that we can show you Right. We have different techniques on how to do things, not just the ones you see, but we're constantly doing like scientific experiments on what works with what <clears throat> to get you the better quality. An easier way to do something. I mean, everybody always learns different ways to do things. So even if you see us do something one way, you might turn around and go, well, I think it's easier to do this way. Or Karen may do something one way and find it easier and I do something another way but it ends up the same result yeah the unraveling of the hair is a little time consuming that's why we're talking that's why it's good we can we can talk that's why you can see i still have a few on each side to do (sighs) but that gives it the more fuller a look you know how you know how us women like fuller looking hair. <laughs> yes. Thicker hair. He's balding a little on top, but you know. That's he can always do the he can always do the comb over. But he'll have his hat on, so that won't matter. <laughs> Mm-mm. Not at all. And I still gotta do his collar a little bit. He looks like the fawns on one side. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know who the fawns is, it's happy days. <laughs> yeah, don't age us. Who's the Fonz, Karen? <laughs> Arthur Fonzarelli. <laughs> Henry Winkler. Who is that? I don't know. You know, he, you know, he was he was here, Henry Winkler, and I would have loved to have met him. He was here. M- Mom does like this book thing in October. I think it's down at the Civic Center. And he was there and she didn't tell me that she wanted to go she really wanted to go but she didn't want to go by herself and i was i think i was in florida at the time 
I might have been in Maryland. I'm not sure. One of the two. But if I could have, I would have gone with her. I would have loved to have met Henry Winkler. And where was he at, though? The Civic Center, I think, oh, down here in West Virginia. Gotcha. They do like a, I think it's the Civic Center. I don't know. It's some book thing that they do every year in October. Which it seems like every year something happens that unable to go like this past year it was COVID and I think the year before I couldn't I just started a job. <clears throat> So it's hopefully this year, maybe. Well, cross your fingers. October's yeah. still far away. Then yeah. again, then again, if you blink a couple times, it might be here. Mm hmm. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> we're, we're in March already. <laughs> and tomorrow's my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, sister. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> maybe she'll watch and then. So this is actually this will be taking place on our record our recording is taking place on March what's today? Tenth. March tenth. And I should have known that because it was Ross's birthday yesterday. <laughs> right. Two thousand twenty one. Two thousand twenty one, which I'm sure it'll be up be posted when it when uh it'll show, but that's funny that we can talk about that in here. <laughs> and Laura's birthday's tomorrow. Yes. See that? Yeah. And of course, she's older. <laughs> she won't know who Arthur Fonzarelli is. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So I have most of it. And the best thing to do, and I don't, I'm unprepared, is to take, if you have a toothbrush, you could use a toothbrush. And that would fuzz it out a little bit and make it a little more curly and thicker. But you, I, you, I forgot to grab that. Or you could use a, um, another thing that people use too. I've seen, um, what do you call them? The dog brushes that have those. Oh, yeah. You know or wig, mean, wig combs. Or wig too. combs too, yeah. But I mean, wig comb might be harder to find. Well, then again, maybe not. I don't know. I've never... I've never searched for a wig comb, so I don't, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if that's easy to find or not. <laughs> so he's got a little bubble here around his collar, so I'm just going to glue that down. Because his hair will hide that. And you can go into, you know, more detail with putting, like I had some extra string here that I could put around here, but I know that we're kind of running out of time. But that would look cute on there too. Yeah, that would be cute. Why not put that there? Well, because we're kind of running out of time. But I, I'll put it on there. I can put it on there and then show it on one of the other videos on all the detail that I do to them afterwards. But for the majority part. But then. Hmm. Huh? Maybe I should glue it on his head, do you think? And there he is. <laughs> I think I might glue it on his head. I was going to say, I think you might have to glue it on. Because it won't stay on. All right. Now let's hope I get it on without getting glue everywhere. Just glue it on the back of the rim there. I didn't trim up these sides either. Let me trim them up real quick. Got little spider webs everywhere using a glue gun. And another thing, you're not a crafter until you have glue spider webs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All right, there he is. Oh, I think I'm gonna move his arm up too. <laughs> He's so cute. And there he is. It's loose in his hair. <laughs> and that's Karen's gnome craft. And that's so cute. That turned out awesome. I love it. Thank you. It's my first gnome. I've never done a gnome before. You've never made a gnome before at all? Nope. Never made a gnome. Aww. It's my first one. Well, you did great for your first one. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> you see that? I mean, everybody makes names differently. They make them with the... Uh, socks with the rice in them and then all that stuff. And I've never seen one made with the paper mache. Well, I mean, I haven't really looked either, but I've never seen one made with the paper mache. I think that's adorable. Now, the dolls that I made that are on our Facebook Barter Crafts, those started out as gnomes, but they tended to get a little bigger and turned out to look more like the pouty dolls that were really big back in the what, back in the 80s or early 90s? I was going to say, I'm not sure what they are. Pouty dolls. <laughs> really? No. Oh, they would look like um, child-sized Cabbage Patch Kids. And they would like... All you saw was the back of them. Because they... Oh, oh, okay. I do remember what you were talking about. Yes. They look, they're like, okay, yes, I do know. I didn't know they were called pouty dolls, but okay. I, that's what I called them. I, think I that, don't know what the name of them. Did they call them like timeout dolls too or something? Oh, that's probably when timeout was starting to get really big. Yeah. Now that I know, now that I'm doing, you said they were fitting, like, now I gotcha. Yeah. I, nobody understood a word I just said, but okay, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Yep. So that concludes the, the gnome making. If you have any questions, um, any suggestions on what I could do different, yep. I'm good for criticism too. Wherever, so. wherever this is posted, it'll be posted on a couple different forums. So wherever you're uh, watching it from, if you have any comments or suggestions or like it or you know, smash the like, like button. like to see button. more? Yeah, smash the like button. And if, um, let me think of what I was going to say. With, with suggestions, with doing crafts, you can only get better. That's right. And remember, everybody has their own opinions of what, how they like things. So, again, you know, you see Karen's gnome, you might want it to be red. Okay, well, that's not a, a criticism that's just a, a preference suggestion to right right and of course they can be done in any color that you want so yes you can do the hair a different color you can paint the beard a different color i saw one the other day that was uh tie-dye had a tie-dye outfit it was really cool ah, now that's really popular too so that probably would have been a cool thing to do yeah i didn't have any of that material no <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, again, that's something that would be a popular thing for people to, because tie-dye seems to be, you know, we're going back to the, what, 60s? Is that when it was? 50s, 60s, 60s, 60s? 60s, late 60s, early 70s. Because the tie-dye was popular? Here I am, the 50s. Where am I at? What kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was... Like, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> All I know is different times always changing and things from... The 60s are coming back. The things from the 70s are coming back. Who knows? I don't. <laughs> yeah, they always make a, a return. That's right. But we hope that you enjoyed the program. And we hope to see you our next one. Um, 
Well, Connie's going to be doing a video, so we'll be posting that on her craft. And then we have March 17th at 8 o'clock for our drawing for our shenanigans live that we did. Any participants there, then their names entered into a drawing for a shirt, and it's made to size for the winner. And we have our spring live, as Connie mentioned, March 19th at 8 p.m. on, and they're both on our Facebook barter craft site. And we will post a link on wherever we post this video. So wherever you're watching from, you should find the link either up above, below, around, somewhere around in the comments. I don't know. Just look for it. <laughs> It'll be there. And don't forget to hit the like button. No, smash it. Smash it. Smash it. <laughs> smash the like button. Okay, we'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for watching. <laughs>